Former New York Congressman Joe DeGuardi is calling for World War II hero Dory Miller to receive a posthumous Medal of Honor. The sailor died at Pearl Harbor 79 years ago today. He wasn't trained for it, but Miller stepped up and manned anti-aircraft guns and took care of the wounded during the Japanese attack. You're going to look right now at a live picture from the Intrepid. On the carriers have always had the names of presidents except one. He is to pay tribute Limit. to survivors and, and the more than 2,000 service members and civilians who were killed in the Japanese attack. There's also a call to action for one hero to receive posthumously the Medal of Honor for his actions. Dory Miller served in the Navy when African Americans were allowed only to work as cooks or servers. During the attack, Miller ran to the deck of the USS West Virginia to fire one of the big guns on Japanese planes that were flying overhead. Miller died later during the war. You see him pictured there on the deck of the Intrepid right now. We're here basically for Pearl Harbor, but in particular for Dory Miller. The reason for this backdrop, a year ago, the Navy announced it's building an aircraft carrier. It's going to cost a billion, five hundred million dollars. It's going to be ready in five to ten years. They don't know yet. And it's going to be named after Dory Miller. The reason why it's important is that these other aircraft carriers They've always had the names of presidents except one, Admiral Nimitz. And this is Dory Miller, who wasn't even an enlisted man or an officer. I started this in Congress in 1987 with a wonderful African American who was chairman of the Congressional Black Caucus. His name was Mickey Leland. We got to work together because we found each other, and he said, Joe, I can't get any Republicans to work with me. I'm not a party type guy. I believe in issues. I believe in people and policy, and that's, you know, human rights is a big thing with me, so is the environment, and I did that as a congressman. I started this with Mickey because Mickey came up to me one day and said, you know, your president, Reagan, executive order is going to get rid of food stamps. Your district is like mine. I'm in Houston, very rich people, very poor people. You're in Westchester, very rich people, very poor people. you got to come with me. i got to go before the Agricultural Committee. I said, I'm going to do it. So when I came to him one time talking about a guy from New York, Albany, Henry Johnson, he says, I'll do it with you, Henry Johnson, we'll open up that statue, but you got to do it for Dory Miller. I says, who's Dory Miller? He says, that's my guy from Texas. I didn't know. A lot of people don't know how heroic this guy was. That's why we're here today. But in any case, I've been working on this 30 years in Congress. We started. Mickey Leland is a hero. He died two years later delivering food and medicine to the starving people of Ethiopia. The plane went down, okay? And I'm continuing this in his memory. Those of you who don't know the entire background, I brought some booklets because when I started this in 1987, it's hard to believe what I heard from Mickey Leland. He said, Joe, a million five hundred fifty thousand African Americans, black Americans, served World War One, World War Two, and not one, not one got our nation's highest award, and dozens were recommended. I says, Mickey, I'm a CPA, and those numbers don't add up. What's the problem? He says, well, you know, we had segregation. And he says, you're talking about racism. But we don't call it. It's racism. you got to call it what it is. So I started with him. We didn't get the first one until 1991. He had already passed away in Ethiopia. And since that time, we've got nine Army medals. Two for the World War One, and seven World War Two. And now this will be the first one in World War II for the Navy. I want to thank Mr. Diagardi for his passionate fight for Dory Miller and this important honor that's long overdue. Dory Miller represents more than just one person who committed a heroic act in a time of crisis. Dory Miller represents the best of what America is. America is being your brother and sister's keeper. America is standing up and fighting for those who can't fight for themselves. It's choosing love over hate. Dory Miller became a member of the United States Navy at a time when the Navy and this country thought of him as less than a man. Didn't keep him from serving. In fact, he received no training in the United States Navy. He could serve food and he could shine shoes. His uniform had plain buttons. He couldn't get the Navy insignia on his button because of his color. And yet, when the time came, when his ship got attacked, during the day when our borders were threatened, and not just our borders, the American way of life was threatened that day. On this day, when Pearl Harbor was attacked, 
Everything that we are and everything we stand for as a nation was attacked. Day of infamy. Day of infamy. And Dory Miller said, not on my watch. Dory Miller, who had no training, jumped up on a machine gun that he had no skills on and began firing at the enemy. And it doesn't matter how many planes or ships he was able to strike. What mattered was he stood up and he was his brother's keeper on that day. When they gave the final order to abandon ship, they all abandoned ship, but they didn't abandon one another. And Dory Miller, who swam almost 400 yards to, to safety, brought other men with him, helped other men get out of the water. Dory Miller represents all of the unsung heroes of our country that we see even to this day. As we live in this pandemic right now, we have unsung heroes, people whose names may never get heard, people who are holding the hands of, of elderly in nursing homes because their families can't be there, people who are cleaning hospitals and delivering meals, people who are continuing to maintain law and order even at a time when chaos seems to rule. Dory Miller for a long time was just a story. People heard of this man who did something heroic and they didn't know his name. But then they found his name. And we will not let his name be forgotten. We're glad that he's received the um, Naval Medal, the third highest honor, the Navy Cross, I believe. Right. Uh, we're super excited that there will be one of these magnificent vessels with the name Dory Miller on it. But Dory Miller and what Dory Miller represents should be recognized with the highest honor this country has to offer, which is the Medal of Honor. Yes. We're here because that honor on his name it's for every unnamed, unknown, unsung hero that keeps America great. And it's when we stand up for each other and we choose love over hate, we don't let our circumstance define our actions, and we do the right thing for the right reasons at the right time, that's the legacy of Dory Miller. And that's what we're here to fight for and advocate for until he is represented in this way for all of our servicemen and women who serve this country honorably every day. Thank you everyone for coming out today. Let me start by saying, as we've always said since 1776, freedom is not free. Let me say it again. Freedom is not free. It has never been free. It always has to be fought for. And this gentleman who we honor today, Mr. Miller, my brother, show Valor, valor in the face of danger. Way beyond the call of duty. Way, way, way beyond. beyond the call of duty for what he did in protection of his shipmates, in protection of his ship, in protection of his country. That is true valor. As we stand here today to honor not only all those who were lost in World War II, but especially those, the unsung heroes of World War II. Because today we share that freedom, we share that legacy, because that what, uh, is what America is about. But throughout the darkest days, with always brings Americans together is their sense of patriotism and their sense of history. No, it's not a perfect history, but it's our history. It's our history. And we all share in that history. We all are part of it. This quilt of different people from different nations, from different backgrounds. That's America. To honor this man, this man of valor, at this time in history, let's make sure we do all that we can that he is awarded the nation's highest honor. The highest honor possible, posthumously for him. And Joe, your support and you picking up this cause uh, is outstanding. When I met Joe four years ago, he told me about what he was doing and I said, Joe, sign me up. So again, I salute you for what he's done, not only in Congress, but out of Congress, for this great cause.
I am honored to have the opportunity to introduce our guest speaker for the day, Mr. Joe Diaguardi. Mr. Diaguardi is a former U.S. Congressman. Mr. Diaguardi served with honor and distinction. He is a former CPA whose main interest in going to Washington was to hold the government physically responsible and stop unnecessary spending. Mr. Diaguardi made many connections and is still widely respected by many, including several members of the Congressional Black Caucus. We are proud of the work that he has done for the last 30 years fighting to get Doris Dory Miller the honor he rightfully deserves. It is my pleasure to introduce Mr. Joe Diaguardi. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here once again. Today, there are 51 congressmen in the House that are African American. Things have changed. It says a lot. Life's going to be a lot easier for you because of them and because of what we're doing for Dory Miller. And I explained what I wanted to do for Sergeant Henry Johnson in Albany. That's the one this black historian, Leroy Ramsey, came to talk to me about. He says, Joe, let me tell you something. If you want to do this, I'll do it with you, but you've got to throw in Dory Miller. I said, well, who's Dory Miller? He's from Texas. Waco, Texas. I'm from Houston. He's from Waco, but he's Texas. But I tell you what, I like this. You're white, I'm black, you're a Republican, I'm a Democrat, not that parties mean anything to me. Let's get together and do it. So we started by putting in a bill to open the statute of limitations for two people, Sergeant Henry Johnson and Messman Dory Miller. That was December 1987. Two years later, Mickey Leland dies in a plane crash to Ethiopia, delivering food and medicine to starving Ethiopians, mainly black people there. Done. We hadn't gotten one medal. Well, I decided to then really up the ante in his honor and really make trouble. You remember what John Lewis said, make trouble, but make good trouble. So I made a lot of good trouble, and they call me a troublemaker. But I went to offices left and right to try to get something going. And the first medal was issued 1991. I was invited to the White House by George H.W. Bush. Today, Corporal Freddy Starris becomes the first black soldier honored with a Medal of Honor from World War I. He sought and helped achieve the triumph of, a, of right over wrong. In 1987, then Congressman Joe Diogardi and uh, my friend, the late Mickey Leland, known to many here from Houston, discovered the Stowers case while conducting other research. And the Army took up the case. And last November, the secretaries of the Army and Defense recommended that Corporal Stowers receive the Medal of Honor. The president at that time, Mickey Leland, wasn't there, but you mentioned Mickey. Now, all these years have gone, and we now have nine medals issued, only to the Army, two from World War I, they were dead, and now seven from World War II, half of them were dead when they got them. And now, Dory Miller, this gentleman, will be the first sailor, first black American in the Navy to get a Medal of Honor. And I believe he's gonna get it this year, okay? Why? Because we have a new president. I know this new president very well. I worked with him on human rights issues. My father was an ethnic Albanian born in Italy, and he has helped me on all these issues to save the Albanian people from genocide. So I have a working relationship with him. There's also something else you should know. Just two days ago, it was announced that the new head of the House Foreign Relations Committee, another good friend of mine, African-American Gregory Meeks from Queens, so you can imagine I'm going to start lobbying him about a lot of things, but to work with me like Mickey Leland did to make sure this thing gets moving soon so we get the ear of the president and we have a, a presentation at the White House to do it. So all I can tell you is life is going to be a lot easier for you as African Americans now that we're getting recognition for African Americans in high positions. You've got 51 congressmen out of 435 that are African-Americans from all over the country. And think about maybe service, but don't think you want to run for Congress right away. Do some service locally in Peekskill and around. And then as you get experience, like I did, I did it at 44. 
My experience came out of a big accounting firm. I figured I could bring all this knowledge that I got on fiscal responsibility, financial accountability, you name it, right auditing, truth, and I named my foundation Truth in Government because of that. Now, Dory Miller was special. Just think about that day, Pearl Harbor. He had just finished collecting the laundry. That's what African Americans, black Americans could do in the Navy. They could serve coffee to the officers, they could swab the decks, they could collect the laundry, but they were not trained for battle stations. But 6 a.m. that morning, all hell broke loose. And as you know, Franklin Roosevelt called it a day of infamy. One of the most horrific things ever. Hundreds of Japanese suicide bombers. They were trained to die. They had to take out everything, all these ships. Over 2,500 men died. Hundreds were injured. Think about 2,500 families that were wanting to have kids, wanted to be with their wives, their grandmas, grandfathers. Think about all the suffering that went on because of that. Not just that ship. That ship lost, I think, two or 300 people. But all of, all of Pearl Harbor, well over 2,500. So we have a debt to pay. I'm paying that debt. I just turned 80. I don't have to do this. I could be out playing golf. I could be doing other things. But I'm, until I die, I'm going to be doing this in the memory of my good friend, Mickey Leland who died with 17 others from Washington, the staff delivering food and medicine to the poorest people in the world at that time in Ethiopia. So there's a debt to be paid, and I'm doing my share to do it. At some point in life, you're going to think about doing something for others who need you. And as you get older, experience is going to give you more ability, more tools, more connections, more education, and more motivation. My dream is to have you join me with Sir Martin McDonald and others that were with us this morning. And you may see it on TV tonight under the aircraft carrier. We figured that's a good place to do it because he's got it now an aircraft carrier. Imagine the Navy has not given him, given him this award, but somehow they realize that they have to do something because the heat's on. And you started the heat here. You had a Dory Miller Day in Peeksco last year. I created one also, I was here with you. I created one in South Chicago with a guy like Martin McDonald, Seth Dunlap, and then I created another one, three of them last year, and the Navy found out about it in San Diego where they have their biggest uh, naval uh, base, all right? So it wasn't by accident that they decided to do that. Now, if they thought that was gonna be the way to pay me off and get rid of me, it's not gonna happen. It's just to name a ship. And that's a big honor though, because only presidents and one guy, Admiral, Admiral Nimitz, who gave the medal, you see this? This is the second highest award in the Navy, the Navy Cross, okay? So the point is that things are starting to change. Now that we have a new president, and I know him very well, he helped me in the Balkans on human rights, I will go to him as soon as he has his inauguration, sit down with Joe Biden and say, and I'm going to also get Gregory Meeks to come with me because he's going to be my new Mickey Leland. And if we have to beg this president to squeeze this in with all the things he's got to do, and believe me, he's inheriting a mess. The thing is to do something important with your life, not to adopt a label. Labels are killing America. Who's from the South? Who's from the North? Who's white? Who's black? Who's poor? This is crazy. Just find something to do of substance and get it done or get it going. So here's our goal right here, to give this man justice. What he did, not only did he go up and find a gun that wasn't being used and get it and started shooting. Some say he shot down one, some say he shot down four. We don't know because there were so many racists in those days. It took us years just to get the after action report that has to be signed by the captain. Now the captain was killed, so another one came on, but he was there at that time and he wrote it. But they didn't even give you his name. It took people in Philadelphia, I think it was a courier, to say who's that African American that everybody's talking about? And finally it forced Admiral uh, Nimitz to leave his ship, 
to go to another ship, invite Dory Miller to come, and he gave him the second highest award. Again, it could have been the first. Everybody says he should have gotten the first. So we gotta now work to make sure we get rid of that injustice. There's too much racial injustice in the military, especially in America. And it's been tough over these years to get these medals. Each one was a battle. Now this is gonna be the biggest battle of all because a lot of people will be blamed once he gets it, including the Secretary of Defense, who was an absolute racist. His name was Frank Knox. You read the stories. He, he, sh he says, we cannot give this African-American the first medal of this war. And he then kept it up and blocked everything from happening even after that. Well, he's gone. We got a lot of other good people there. So this is the year we got to do it. I'm convinced you're doing a great job. Thank you for the petition. Just let's keep something, doing something so that people in Washington can hear that there are still people very interested in this, and I'll help you keep delivering that message, okay? Thank you very much. Dory Miller was working in the kitchen aboard the USS West Virginia when the Japanese attacked. In fact, he remembered that many of his men were still friends, were still down below, and without getting into all the, the support, I'll tell you that he didn't give up. He went back and forth to get people on that deck away from the fumes and, and away from the fact that the ship could have flipped. Actions that were not in his job description, heroic but not recognized with a Medal of Honor. A million five hundred and fifty thousand African Americans, black Americans served in World War One and World War II, but not one got our nation's highest military honor. Former Congressman Joe DiGuardi has been working on securing these medals for years. Miller's would be the 10th if approved. Black Medals of Honor for war heroes who were denied. And joining in the fight to award Miller the Medal of Honor, Peekskill High School students who look up to him as a hero. If I had a hat on, I would take off my hat. I would show my respect to him. I would stand up straight, look him in the eye, shake his hand, tell him what a great job he's done. But instead, this group of black diamonds are canvassing, asking people to sign a petition. They commemorated their efforts so far on Saturday, the anniversary of that tragic day. The petition, along with evidence uncovered in an internal investigation, will be sent over to the Navy for review. The group hopes Miller will officially earn the Medal of Honor by sometime next year. In Peekskill, Sabrina Franza, News 12. I'm former Congressman Joe DiAguardi, now an active citizen, doing uh, the work that I did in Congress with some nonprofit organizations that I set up, and I'm particularly grateful today to be here with the black community because I started something in Westchester County, in Mount Vernon, my district, for them, and that's what this is all about. This little booklet tells it all, and I made enough copies for everybody here because there's a history here. When I got to Congress, a black historian, Dr. Leroy Ramsey, came to see me, and he said, uh, Joe, you were the only one to answer a letter I drafted for Governor Cuomo to 30, 34 congressmen that were representing Westchester County. In those days, we had 17 Democrats, 17 Republicans. We're down to 27. We're losing some power. So he said, did you know that a million five hundred and fifty thousand African Americans served World War One and World War Two, and not one, not one got our country's highest military award. It's called the Medal of Honor, not the Congressional Medal of Honor. It's called the Medal of Honor. I said, you know, I'm a CPA, and those numbers don't add up. Well, what's the issue? He says, well, we had segregation in World War One and World War Two. This was President Wilson. The whole country was segregated in terms of the government. And he said, uh, it turned out that this happened. Well, I said, then this must be racism. Well, we don't like to call it that. Well, you got to call it what it is. It's racism because of all those people that served and do dozens were recommended for our nation's highest award, this is the Medal of Honor, 
why didn't at least one get it? So I started to act on this in Congress, and I said, well, you know what? I'm a junior member of the minority party down here. I better find someone with power. And I went to the Congressional Black Caucus chairman, Mickey Leland, and I explained. He says, Joe, you know what? I'll do it for your guy in New York, Henry Johnson, and that was who I was looking for, if you work with me on Dory Miller. So we both put in bills to open up the statute of limitation in order to, and you have to do that, to then get a Medal of Honor if so many years pass by. And we started that in 1987. Well, the resistance was incredible, but we were activists. We went around the House floor, got people to sign on, and we got almost 200 signatures when the Secretary of Defense, Carlucci, calls me and he says, you know, you guys are making trouble. Why don't you come into my office? I says, I'd be delighted to, but I have to bring Mickey Leland with me. And that's when he made a Solomon-like decision. He said, I tell you what, don't run around getting signatures. I will get a grant from the Department of Defense, I'm the Defense Secretary, and get an independent black university, turned out to be Shaw, to do the study. How many African Americans got the second highest award and why didn't they get the first? And it turned out that we got seven medals from that study, but the first one was issued, Corporal Freddie Stowers, South Carolina, and I was in the White House ceremony with President George H.W. Bush. The one that we were searching for, for New York State, Henry Johnson, that came in the Obama White House in June 2015. Now why this is important and timely today is that if you woke up and read the papers, New York Times, on Saturday, you'd find out that today in Honolulu, the Navy Secretary is announcing that the next aircraft carrier is going to be named for Dory Miller, the one that we've been fighting for for 30 years to get a Medal of Honor. Here's the guy from New York, and, here's, and these are the first two that we opened the statute of limitations for, Mickey Leland and myself. So I continue this as a citizen, 30 years, we now have nine medals, and we're hoping to have the 10th one, and maybe now we're gonna get it even faster because a lot of people now will learn about the heroism of this gentleman who was called a messman. Why? There were no really enlisted people. If you were an African American, you were in the kitchen, and they served the officers. At the end of the war, World War II, they changed that. But this is a phenomenal story, and it all started in Westchester County.